green means enabled. How does this work? Fair enough, so I will, I will talk about user interface again, this time from a slightly different perspective and, and in particular from the perspective of LibreOffice extensions and macros and user interface inside. Uh, is there anybody in this room who doesn't know what LibreOffice extension is? Everybody knows, cool. So I don't have to explain. Every presentation has to contain a lolcat, so here is the one. Uh, fair enough. Uh, okay, so, so LibreOffice extensions are one of the few things in life or few occasions in life where, where when you can have your cake and eat it too. So, so it's good for the users. Users are happy because the func functionality they need in LibreOffice is just a few clicks away. They can install an extension and and I don't know, use their, use their dictionary or, or like have some functionality available that's not in core by default. And the core developers are at least not unhappy because the core is not polluted by all the functionality that is, that is used by only a limited group of people. Uh, there are some more critical views of this topic and if you want to hear them there will be a presentation on extensions about an hour later. So I suggest that you see that as well. Um, so once upon a time on IRC, there was a user who came in and asked that he's, he's writing a Python macro and now he wants to open uh, a dialog from this macro and he's using PyQt and the LibreOffice freezes, so, so what can they do? And this is what I thought. <laughs> 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 like using using an external UI toolkit in combination with LibreOffice is really not a good idea. But like, what can you do? Sometimes you, if you if you write an extension or just a small macro, it needs some user interaction. You need to ask user a question or have them choose from multiple options. So you need to have some means how to how to define user interface and how to add some dialogues or other user interface elements to your extensions and fortunately LibreOffice comes with a rather advanced set of tools to do just that and here is some brief list of the user interface elements that you can you can add from the extensions and macros. I did not include notebook bar because I was not sure if it's possible to use notebook bar from the extension, but I don't think it is so far. Okay, so you want to define a dialogue. How can you do that? For example, like this. You probably don't want to do this. This is some very <laughs> Verbis Java code. I, I, I forgot to specify source. This is taken from, from the LibreOffice developers guide and it creates the dialogue in this very verbis way and adds all the controls on the fixed positions with the fixed size and you really don't want to do that. Another way. This looks like an XML. Slightly less verbis. And it defines a dialogue that just contains some, I think it's a combo box, and that's it. But if you, if you don't want to write XML manually, there's another, some end of 20, beginning of 21st century way to do that, mm -hmm. in a user-friendly way, <laughs> that even like a non-technical user can have the, have the define the user interface or dialogue in an extension and I will show that now. So the tool for that is hidden behind tools, macros and it's this organized dialogues menu. Um, I, will, I will choose some, here you can see some, some list of dialogues I already have. So this template changer is some, some extension I have, I have already installed. I will, I will show um, the dialogue it defines. So now I click edit and I have 
how do I move this? I can't undo. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> this is some some kind of canvas, some some kind of dialogue. Here in the toolbar, I can I can drag and drop and add controls here. I uh, hopefully I can't. Yes. So I can I can add controls like this. I can move them around. Hopefully, yeah, I can move them around. Uh, I can I can define their properties here in the in this kind of pane. For example, I don't know. I can change the font. And then I can have a look if I'm if I'm happy with the result, and I can see a lame preview like this. Uh, so um, then there are also like further options to uh, so for for every control in the dialog, you can you can define an interaction. You can connect it to some macro or to some function that will be executed when this event happens. So for example, in this particular extension, there's the some file chooser or some, some text field where, where I can enter the file name. And what I see over there, this template changer dot something something is a link to the macro in my module that or some, some subroutine or, or a function in, the, in my library that will be executed when this event happens. And what I consider to be absolutely killer feature of this dialogue designer is how, how easily can a localization be added. So by clicking on this globe, globe icon, I can, I can define languages. So, so in my case, German is the default language of this extension. So if no localization, localization no other language is added, the user interface will be in German. And I have one more language here, and I can add multiple languages from this choice of choice of available languages. And then when I want someone to localize, or when the, when the translator wants to localize the dialog, they can just switch between the languages using this list box. And then whatever whatever they edit here, the text they adhere in this this properties editor will be added to the translation or to the local file for that language. And then you simply save the thing and forward it to the to the extension author, and then they have a nice new localization of your dialogue. Okay, but nobody's perfect, and neither is this way of adding dialogues to your user extensions. And here you can see why. Uh, so those. Dialogues are not resizable. Every control is, is placed on the fixed position and has a fixed size. That means if you design dialogue in this way, you have to optimize for the for the most verbose translation you can get, and still you're not safe because like the controls can get cropped and things can go wrong. But if you have been around LibreOffice development for a couple of years, then you will remember that some three years ago we solved exactly this problem in LibreOffice Core uh, in a way that the UI, the new XML format for the definition of dialogues was introduced. It was this UI format, the dialogues were made layout aware and yeah they were, are now resizable and, and somehow like better positioned and better organized. So, <laughs> so here is some uh, how to. There is a way now how to how to do that in the in the LibreOffice extensions as well. It's a proof of concept. It's not finished. It just exists in my private branch. But the idea is to have this modern dialog format, the UI format those dialogues to be loadable also from the extensions as well. 
and there's a couple of steps how to get there. The first three of them are done already. The first step is that uh, we accept the UI file or we are able to open the UI file from just about everywhere. The extension, the zip package, any URL, uh, because like the previously it was only possible to, there was this sofis.cfg sofis folder hard coded, so, so uh, this, is, this is no longer the case that is hard coded. Then the next step was to create a small, you know, component that would that would open this dialog. It would be, well, that, that's the technical detail that would be derived from this ex executable dialog. And then the next step is to, well, I mentioned those, those user interactions and tie, tying various events of the user interface to the, to the macros or to the, to the functions. So this is also possible to do that in Glade, if you know Glade. There you can, it's the signal element of the UI file where you can define what's going to happen when user clicks the button or the focus leaves the control or those things. So the parser or the reader of those UI files was extended to read those signals. And uh, now the most hard part of that is actually like to read those signals and to, to have the controls actually to do something. So this is, this is not done yet. And well, a couple of pipe dreams is that um, I will, I will go a couple of slides back because I forgot about a slide. Oh, no, I don't have it there anymore. Never mind. Uh, uh, so there's a very convenient way how to access those controls in BASIC. A uh, couple of convenient functions. So, well, so, so what I've tried so far is that I, I loaded this, this UI code from, from, the, from the Java code. There's no convenience access methods to the to opening the dialog and to the controls like in the basic currently has. And one thing I feel sorry about that uh, if we if we uh, load those UI files from the extensions, we will use this killer localization feature. It will no longer be possible to add localization in this trivial and easy way. So that's about it, and I have some five minutes to take questions. Yes? I have asked Quayle all about uh, standardizing his, his uh, XML format and some combinations of uh, terminal. I haven't asked Quayle on anything. What do you think, No, I just going to wonder um, about in your current um, branch. When you pass the file, do you generate um, the, the OS replacements? You know how the current one, it will create a BCL, but uh, basic code works with out something. Yes, so, uh, so, so in this in this small, you know, component, I have just this like scope VCL pointer and then dialog execute. It only opens the dialog. Mm -hmm. And then what I, I, I did not get that far. I thought I would, I would, I would somehow there would be some crawler of this VCL builder, and that would build the, this X dialog model out of those so those controls I, that are inside. I, what I thought we might do initially, which I did three or four years ago, was that you'd have the parser itself with the kind of a hook, and it would tell you what, what to generate depending on a, an extra factory argument. So mm. you had the VCL one, and would say here's a, here's a GPU button, and it would say make VCL button. And we can pass in another factory that would say create out control button. And that, that way you'd configure it with a kind of a trick. And then there'd be the Glade catalog that would be special for the basic ones and it would have all the you know, different properties that are already now in. Um, yeah. I think that's not of interest to everybody, so we can maybe talk about that yeah, like offline. <laughs> I still think it rocks with it, so I use it. Yeah, well, I'm I'm currently like able like the, the, the motivation like why why I did this that like I wrote a LibreOffice extension, and then some very important manager in my job came and complained, oh the text is cut off, do something, and I thought I can't do something easily because fixed size, fixed position, and then I thought like it would be it would be great to to open those those UI files. Unfortunately, like I can just open them and close them. It does nothing. But for the for the purpose I needed that, it was enough. Fair enough. Thank you.
at the start or when answering questions mm. when there's a lot of detail on just to show the slide view and then mix and match I just have to do that live it's not recording all of that and then do the later or yeah should be doing it should be doing it live why is it still showing hmm a bit odd Yeah, so uh, let's